keep up to date with our latest videos, please hit the button below. There, Chris here from racingbetdata.com, uh, bringing you another video showing you uh, another angle or approach that you can use potentially to um, to harness ideas uh, using our two standalone files, the pre-race download and the results and odds files. Now, this file that I'm going to bring up here is actually one that we uh, created uniquely for a member. It was uh, a bespoke re request that came in. Um, we worked with that member to, to create the file. Um, VBA coding involved and a lot of uh, tinkering alterations made and it took about seven, eight, nine hours actually to, to create um, off the bat. Obviously this video is not gonna go on that long because we have the file. Um, I've stripped it down a little bit, uh, but I'm gonna essentially walk you through uh, the stages <clears throat> that were involved and how we created it uh, and its intended purpose as well. So um, this is a, a rock and roll Saturday night for me, sat in front of the screen talking to myself, but it's a, it's a nice break from the um, uh, all the enhanced features that I've been working on throughout the day. So um, on the head to head page today, getting all the new um, uh, filter filters applied, uh, all the outputs adjusted accordingly. Um, it seems that we we're getting closer and closer. We were, we we're almost there, but new requests and um, alterations and user um, inquiries are coming in, just, just halting things slightly. But like I said, the, the many a times before, the testing phase is the most important. We need to be diligent with that. So I'm not gonna rush the release, and, but as soon as it's ready, you'll be the first to know. Um, and these new f filters that we're going to add in are, are going to be even more powerful than, than what we have already. So uh, it's going to be a great benefit to all. Anyway, I've digressed slightly and back on topic. Um, so we're going to use the pre-race download file. So I'm going to go in and download, down, download that one. Uh, and that is ready to open. So I'm going to open that one up on the screen. Oh, got it open twice. What's going on here? Uh, let's kill that one and I'm going to kill already had these downloaded I'm just going to kill both of these and that one uh, okay let's let's try that again so we're going to download the pre-race download file open it up and whilst we're doing that we can go to the results and odds file uh, page and download that one so you can see the last update there is 5 past 8 um, so it a, I think it's a race that's just taken place at uh, the 8.30, so we're not going to have that in our data set, but that's, uh, that's fine, no big deal there. Uh, I'm just going to go and get the example file that I use, bring that one up, okie dokie, and there it is, got the example file up. Uh, we've got pre-race download file and the results file. Okay, just make sure they're all open. There we go. So here's the results file. So I'm going to talk you through the example file that I have here. So we have four tabs. So pre-race. So this is where I load the or the the user will load the the pre-race download files. Now the, the the sheet's been adapted. Originally it was requested just to look at the previous day have adapted this now so you can add multiple days worth of um, pre-race download files into this one tab uh, stacked on top of each other. Um, the results tab same so um, you can add multiple days um, stacked on top of each other. In this video I'm just going to use today's and see where we are. Then we have control tab so the this, the request from the, the member was around two of our columns in the pre-race download file, uh, namely the um, average SP drop in percentage last five and average SP drop last 18 months. So that's what we're going to be using in this video. But um, there's no reason why if you wanted to design something on the back of this, you couldn't use some of the other filters uh, and column headers in that um, pre-race download file. These are the ones that uh, he requested to, to use to, to hone the selections. Then we have a tick offset and stop loss, uh, the staking column, 
and commission. So this theory is all based around um, placing a initial back bet and then uh, a lay bet being placed at the um, set amounts here. So either 20 ticks below, 20 ticks above uh, as your stop loss. Now, whether that's done manually, traded, um, or whether software is used, uh, that's that's up to you or up to the member who requested it. But the, these are the parameters that we're using uh, to, to generate the selections and the, uh, the analysis. Uh, stake, so that's how much is being staked, but not always at risk because of your stop loss and the commission. Um, and then finally, we have a summary um, tab. So there's nothing in there at the minute because we've got no data. So we're going to load some data in and see what we uh, see what we get. So I'm going to open the pre-race download file, copy all of the information here, and then go back to the example file and as simple as pasting that in. I'm going to go to the empty results tab on the results file, go back here and paste it in. So as I said, that will contain all of the races apart from the last one today because it hasn't it's just, just finished. So that'll pick up on the nine o'clock um, results and odds update. Um, multiple days that can be stacked underneath the way I've designed it. Uh, don't need the header row. So you just you literally just stack the next days underneath and the same with the pre-race download file. So back to the control tab, um, there are two buttons here. So one, if I click this one, we'll clear these sheets. So originally designed because we wanted to clear the previous day's data out, load in the next days. So that's there to, to wipe everything down. <clears throat> this one here will update all calculations. So what it will do is put on our summary tab, all horses from our pre-race download. So this was this morning's pre-race download file. And we're looking at these two columns here. So it'll be looking for um, horses that had a minimum SP drop last five races of 40% and a max of 80 uh, and a minimum um, last 18 months, 60% and a maximum of 80. And again, these can be tinkered, altered. So I've just got some nominal values in here at the minute. So that's the column it's looking at. Um, then it, what it will do, we'll simulate um, placing a back bet at uh, the SP price. And what it will do is calculate whether using these in play odds from the results file, Let me just bring that up to the top. It will, uh, it will check to see whether from the first traded price in play, it went 20 ticks below or 20 ticks above first. So what that's doing is simulating whether the uh, Betfair SP bet, which was matched as a back, whether the offset would have triggered the uh, tick offset 20 ticks lower or the stop loss 20 ticks higher first. Okay, so let's press the button and see what we get. So here's the summary tab. Now you can see what the filter controls in here just saying that are we um, matching the last, uh, are, we, are we using these controls essentially so you can turn these on or off, um, but we've got them set to yes. And what it's done is update me with all the horses here today that matched the criteria that we asked for. Uh, so we've got what's that, about 60 horses on the list that match that criteria. Um, now where they were not found, these either haven't run yet because it's the, the last race of the day or they were non-runners withdrawn. So um, not all of those horses run. So we're down to about 55. And then what it's um, showing you here is staking 10 pounds. Uh, and that can be adjusted in the control tab. So if we wanted to up that to 20 or down to five, whatever, whatever it may be, uh, the, the position the horse finished and the returns you would um, have received if you just done a straight back on that. Now any wins factors in your commission, which again can be toggled on the control tab. So back returns here and obviously where you've got the red negative, the horse did not win the race. Uh, then what we've got is some hidden columns here or hidden calculations to look for the tick offset and the stop loss. So it is now added in to our results page with the macro that I created, these additional columns. 
So it's saying here, with this horse at the top, let me just have a look at his name, uh, free speech. So free speech is BSP was 12.41. So if we placed a back bet at Betfair SP with a t uh, 20 tick stop, stop loss and a 20 tick tick offset, it would have been placed at 6. Uh, 6.8 for the low for the tick offset and 24 for the high which is the stop loss um, and then I've got some lookup columns and these look to see which uh, which was triggered first so the loss the lower or the higher value which one happened first and where it's got a zero it means it, it didn't get that high it wasn't found when you got zeros here it didn't reach the low so that is my what, what took the took the time with this um, with this sheet, um, and it's all done using um, VBA in the background. So I can open up the developer tab here, and you can see these calculations are, are all embedded in here. Um, and I'm not going to get into that level of detail because that you know that is that's what took the time. So the video would go on for five, six, seven hours if I was to to explain that to, to everybody. So I think you either understand how uh, VBA works or, or, or you don't. So um, it's it's something that takes time to understand and learn, uh, but can be done. And you can see the power of it there. It's added in these additional columns and done the calculations as quick as you can click your fingers to check uh, for what we want to what we want to do. I'm by no means an expert which is why it probably took me three times the length of time it'd take a, uh, a seasoned professional coder or developer, um, but, but it got the, um, got the work and the output done as needed. So I'm going to head back to the summary and let's have a look for the first one here. So um, ancient wisdom, you can see the column here is saying that the tick offset was reached first. Uh, that would be your exit odds. So 20, uh, 2.64. So let's have a little, little look for ancient wisdom on the results tab. I'll do a control find and let's highlight it so we can see uh, when we scroll across. Uh, so here we go. So here, here's the BSP 3.05. And as I explained, the in-play low target, 20 ticks below would be 2.64. Uh, the stop loss would be set at 4.2. So you can see here 2.64 was hit first um, it was and this is the calculation of the cell position so 80 uh, columns across whereas it did hit the tick offset but it hit it 54 columns across so obviously the smaller number means it was hit later in the race so it would already have triggered um, the the tick offset uh, bet which would have greened you up so that part is becomes insignificant and the tiff tick offset uh, is what uh, what was hit first and gave us a profit of one pound fifty two, and the liability is calculated based on the maximum, so the offset odds. So assume that we hit the stop loss on every single one of these um, that did run, that would be your, your your maximum odds, and that would be your your loss, so your overall liability. So although we're saying we're staking uh, ten as a unit. Uh, with the stop loss applied, you're not actually risking all of that 10. Now, it's important to throw a caveat in here, or a couple of caveats, and this has been covered before and in other videos, but it's important to stress um, the importance of this here as well. These um, in-play prices that are recorded about twice a second or three times every two seconds, they are not volume dependent. And what I mean by that is these are just price markers. So it's just calculating the last price that was matched as that race develops. Now it could be that the price that was matched here was for two pounds. Um, and that could have been the low, the lowest point it reached was two pounds. So although it's recording that the price dropped that low, it's not guaranteeing that you would have a matched tick offset um, at that price. So that is why when you look at the results and odds file, as we have here, the minimum price in play 
will differ from um, the data dashboard and the recorded um, odds in your uh, pre-race download file. So if we go back to this one here and we look at um, the in-play low that's recorded here, this, these ones which come direct from the data from the dash uh, the database, which is the same as the data dashboard, these are where there's a hundred pound minimum reached. So these come direct from Betfair, uh, and it's the same that you'll you'll probably see on on other uh, odds publishing sites. They will use that hundred pound or hundred unit currency stake um, as the cutoff, which will give you a reasonable confidence level that you would have been matched at that price. Whereas our um, in-play odds recorder is purely to show you the price changes as they went, regardless of the amount that was matched. So that's where there's a, a slight risk, if you like, when using this, if you're assuming that at 2.64, you would have got matched, which is what this file is doing. We're actually looking below 2.64, so we're erring on the side of caution here when we say we're looking that's the point we want to look at but it's actually saying did did the, um, did the horse trade below that but it's not taking into account the value and the volume so that is why you might see slightly different um, figures between the two sheets because this is a pure odds stamp um, printing sheet whereas the um, dashboard and the pre-base download file calls from the database are um, finalized odds that come direct from Betfair. So that's part one of your caveat that you do have to consider. It is, it is real and it's, you know, it's it's something you, you, you do need to, to look at and, and understand. And then on the flip side of that, the tick offset. So where we say we set the tick offset at uh, 4.2 on this horse that we uh, had the example of ancient wisdom. Now it might be that the stop loss was blown. So if a horse didn't come out of the stalls or come out really slowly, or it fell at the first hurdle and the jumps meet, it's possible and it's likely that all that your stop loss wouldn't have got matched. So where we're saying here on a stop loss that um, Grand Providence, for instance, that um, had a BSP of 18.46 and it didn't drop 20 ticks below that, or didn't drop before it hit the stop loss, that is assuming that your stop loss got, got matched as well. And that's not always a guarantee for the reasons I've given. So it might be that you know, a real bad start for the horse, or it's been taken down, or it's fallen, whatever that reason, it's possible that your stop loss will not be matched either. That's just something that's impossible um, to, to record on here. Um, the assumption is made that that price is hit first before the tick offset. Um, so again, something else to consider when when using this on and looking at figures when you're when you're comparing um, odds in play. Usually they'll be they'll be right and they'll be accurate. And you know what you see on here is what will uh, what will happen when you uh, if you were to replicate that in real time. But like I said, there are instances where. You know, a traded price will hit your uh, tick offset, but you might not get matched. You might be further back in the queue and the volume wasn't significant enough to match yours. Um, and your tick offset might be met at a higher price or it might not be met at all, uh, again, for the reasons given. So wanted to throw those caveats in there and, and make sure that people are aware of that, that, you know, what you see here isn't always... Uh, set in stone as to what you'd get there'll be a fluctuation so that brings me on to the summary at the top so you can see here i've, I've just summarized for the for the user here how much uh we would have staked so there's 53 horses 530 pounds uh if you back them all to win you would have lost 301 um with a return of investment of minus 56.8 on these 53 selections but on the trading side of things, so if you backed your £10 and then triggered your tick offset and your stop loss, um, your liability would have been lower because of the reason I've given here, because you've always got a stop loss in place, you know, with the caveat that I've just thrown in. 
um, and you've got your tick offset. So here where the horse went on to win and you would have returned 20 pounds, nine pence, uh, it, trading, you, you only return one pound 52 on that one particular instance. But you can see overall, obviously we came out with a simulated profit of 13 pound 39 and a fairly reasonable return on investment of 5.29%. Um, over on the right hand side, you can see I've got the same summarized, but we've got that by date. So if you do add in more um, rows, different days into these two files, um, you would build up a picture of how those are looking over a, a period of time. So back to the control tab, um, if we wanted to tinker with these and let's say we wanted to bring that down to 15, you can just click the update all calculations button again and then you can see what that profit would look like. So again, this one hasn't changed because we haven't changed any of the factors involved. We haven't changed any of the um, criteria for selecting the horses. It's still the same amount of horses, but what we've done is we've dropped the stop loss. So on uh, Ancient Wisdom, where that was um, um, 4.2, sorry, on the in-play high, it's now um, 3.85 because we dropped the number of ticks. I think that's right. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. It's late. It's OK. It's been a long day. But you can see, let's put it back and, and we'll simulate it again. So it's 3.85 there. If we put it back to 20, and then update calculations. Yeah, well, it was 4.2. I'm not going mad. I'm going to put it back to 15. But you can see how quickly that calculates. Uh, and then that's obviously meant the figures have adjusted because we've put a lower stop loss in. Um, and that means le less risk, less liability or lower liability. That's why we've been more profitable because the ones that have traded and hit the offset have done so presumably again. Um, and the ones that hit the stop loss first um, have hit it, but have we've had a, lo a lower liability because we're, we're traded out earlier. Um, and that essentially is how the file works. Um, these are all here for manipulation purposes. Now the file could have been built with anything in mind, specifically these new columns that we've added in um, for, for users, the um, tick drop columns. Um, but this was the, the request for the user. So this is how it's set up. Um, these can be adjusted. Again, if we wanted to put 20 in, update all calculations. Uh, and then that shows you with your adjusted profit loss based on a 20 unit stake, as I was saying earlier. So doubled basically what we uh, we would have seen as a profit. Um, so the intention of this video is to show you how it can be done. Now, like I said, this file was created for a user and charged accordingly as we do for development time. Um, there's people out there, I'm sure, who are um, more in tune and better at VBA uh, than myself. Um, there are people obviously that, that don't have those skills and would like to learn them, I'm sure. So the best thing to do I would recommend is is going on to, to the Excel forums, onto Google um, and whatever it is you're trying to do, um, you can build up in blocks and stages um, and to, to the ultimately to get to the level that I've got to here to be able to create this spreadsheet but it's very simple adding in helper columns along the way um, as in here um, having a control sheet is important so you can control all of your um, your parameters that you want to, to use for your selections also your um, the, the outputs and the actions that you want to take those can be all controlled within there um, you control your stake and your um, commission. So all of those calculations can be factored in. And then obviously just use a simple pivot table in here with a bit of code in the background here. Um, sorry, it's on, on one of these that will refresh the pivot table. There you go, call refresh pivot table. So that just updates automatically with that one line of code. So just wanted to show you this because it's an angle. We haven't really spoke much about the, um, the results and odds file. Um, and people are keen to use them. So I'm hopefully explained a bit more detail about what the sheet can do for you and how you can use it. 
But equally, the, the, the risks and the things to look out for when you're using uh, in-play odd stamps where they're not price specific. So I'll leave you with that. Hope, Philly, that was of use to you. Um, I, we don't want to get bombarded with people saying, give me the sheet because we've charged a user for it. So that, you know, that's off the table. Um, but, you know, people that have seen this and want to replicate or design something similar, and the, the idea is here that we, we give that inspiration so you can see what sort of things can be done. Um, and you could probably use this and come up with something even better. Um, tailor it to your needs. We've seen a lot of um, talk around people who, uh, who have now found new edges and they're, they're keen to share it with people. Um, we would advise against it because you will just erode your edge if everybody jumps on something that's successful. So use the data, find your own way, um, be unique uh, and, and continually evolve to think about new ways to do it. We've got plenty of data here. This is just a snapshot of what, what we can do with one day's worth of data. Um, so be inventive, spend your time, um, learn how to analyze and, and manipulate the data because that will give you the, the biggest and best advantage that you can get.